Hey guys, Level Cap here and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming. Following the most recent major update to Battlefield 5, players have encountered a handful of new bugs. A hotfix was pushed out this week to address some of them, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be quite as effective as DICE and players had hoped. While significant issues like hit registration and crashes on Xbox were addressed, outstanding issues with invisible soldiers and general performance were not. Frustration regarding these issues was magnified by the recent addition of a $30 starter pack for Battlefield 5 that includes a selection of cosmetic items and in-game currency. Many players have taken to sites like Twitter, Reddit, and even comments on my videos to voice their frustration. Generally, people are pretty disappointed that every patch Battlefield 5 gets fixes one or two things while also breaking several others. Fixing the bugs for All Sedan Conquest have been partially successful. They did, however, encounter a new graphical corruption issue, so it's delayed the launch of the map slightly. The next map, Merida, is still on schedule for a launch before the end of the month. Gray Market key reseller website G2A stirred the pot again this week when it was discovered they were buying Google ads for their listings. The listings appeared at the top of search results for relevant games, pushing visibility for official key selling websites like Steam, GOG.com, and even the devs' own websites further down the page. This sparked both outrage from fans of indie game developers and the developers themselves. Many devs took to Twitter saying that they'd rather people pirate their games than buy them from G2A. G2A has made a name for themselves by selling games for a heavily discounted rate. The problem here is that many of these keys are purchased through stolen fraudulent credit cards where developers never see any of the money from those transactions or people buy in bulk when a game goes on sale and then resell the keys on G2A.com, basically putting the game on permanent sale for anyone who wants to use a gray market listing, which is totally not the intended point of developers putting games on a limited time sale as opposed to indefinite lifetime sale. There's many, many other shady aspects of their business overall. And as a response to the recent Google ad controversy, G2A issued a statement saying that they're willing to pay back 10 times the cost of money lost due to chargebacks. This is to indie developers and whatnot. The problem is that chargebacks are just one of the many ways devs lose money when their keys are sold on G2A. G2A took to Twitter to defend their business practices. In one tweet, they even go so far as to call people abusing their platform scumbags. They also alleged that if they stopped facilitating the sale of stolen keys, sellers would just move to another platform. Many people pointed out the obvious moral fallacy of this tweet here that's basically saying, well, if I don't do a bad thing, then somebody else will do a bad thing, which isn't really an argument for doing a bad thing. A few years ago, I did a video regarding G2A and their somewhat scummy practices. Since then, they've allegedly offered to remove any fraudulent keys being sold on the site. Clearly, they haven't done much of anything. And the problem, if anything, has gotten worse since I've made the video. They've even started charging people for inactivity on their G2A accounts. Also, they even tried to take down my video that I made on G2A's shady business practices, citing that I was infringing their copyrights by using their logo in the video. Fortunately, fair use does rule in my favor and YouTube did not honor their strike but it is clear that they're trying to remove any sort of negative publicity about their website any way they can. Red Dead Redemption 2's PC port is looking more and more likely. The Rockstar Social Club, which is the developer's DRM and online services system, was recently updated to include a reference to achievements for Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC. The reference was buried in the website's source code, but was quickly discovered. A PC version of Red Dead Redemption 2 has been anticipated well before the game's actual launch. Apex Legends Season 2 update is finally here. Whether or not it's the boatload of fresh content the game needs to keep players interested remains to be seen, but it's done a lot of good to the game regardless. Season 2 adds the new hero Watson, the L-Star EMG, new weapon attachments, and makes a ton of major changes to the game's map. I did a full video covering all the new content, so be sure to check that video out. 
While Apex's current player count is likely in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, there's been a general stigma regarding its lack of content and significant updates. Season 2 has a lot to offer both new and returning players. Hopefully it's the start of much more to come, and hopefully the community supports a much more realistic dev cycle. It's been made clear that the developers behind Apex are not interested in putting their team into a non-stop crunch period to get content out at the same rate that Fortnite does. And I think gamers should support that decision and hopefully support the games that don't basically torture their dev team. Rainbow Six Siege has a lot going on these days. Clash and deployable shields have been re-enabled following their deactivation nearly a month ago. The deployable shield is getting reworked to include windows and more rigid placement system. It's a big change and hopefully it doesn't disrupt the balance of the game too much. Siege has also gotten a new limited time mode complete with its own set of cosmetic items. Called Showdown, it's a 3v3 deathmatch set on a custom western themed map. Players are equipped with a shotgun and pistol. Still, the event is live until the 16th. The Division 2's developers are backtracking from their previous stance regarding raid difficulty. While it's intended to be hard, the game's first raid proved a monstrous challenge for players, especially on the console. Since its release, some players have been asking for a reduced difficulty option for matchmaking. At the time, the devs stood firm that they were happy with the raid's difficulty and wouldn't be changing it. Now it seems like they've changed their minds. The game's public test server now includes an option to select a difficulty for raid matchmaking. Assuming no major issues are found with the update, it will eventually be pushed to the game's live servers. The developers of Alan Wake have acquired the publishing rights to the game from Microsoft, the game's original publisher. The devs tried to interest Microsoft in a sequel since right after the first game proved to be a hit, but nothing ever came of it. Now that they have publishing rights, it might be a different story. The devs went on to make sci-fi shooter Quantum Break and are about to release a new shooter called Control. While both games clearly borrow heavily from Alan Wake, Quantum Break failed to stand out. Control looks promising, but we'll have to wait for its launch to see if the devs should consider a follow-up to their original classic. Cyberpunk 2077 just keeps getting more impressive. It's been revealed that the game has three unique origin stories to play through as prequels for the main story. Each origin story is built to reflect the backstory you choose for your character. They fall into general categories of Nomad, Corpo, or Street Kid. Each one has a different starting location and tells a story that directly ties into the rest of the game. Cyberpunk 2077 releases on April 16th, 2020 and features Keanu Reeves in a significant supporting role. Black Ops 4's overly complicated and messy microtransaction system has been heavily criticized recently for including pay-to-win elements and milking players that want the game's full selection of guns. In response, Treyarch have implemented a few things to make earning items more accessible. The most recent addition comes in the form of duplicate protected loot boxes. These can only be earned by playing the game and include three unique items. As the name implies, there will be no duplicate items in these cases. Of course, this then begs the question, why are the game's existing loot boxes giving out duplicate rewards in the first place? NVIDIA's new super line of RTX graphics cards has been revealed. The RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080 are all getting essentially direct replacements with slightly better performance at roughly the same price. The super GPUs offer 8GB of VRAM and basically take each tier of GPU up one rung on the performance ladder. So the Super 2060 performs as well as the standard 2070 and so on. In a nutshell, this move lends a little bit more credence to the notion that NVIDIA artificially raised the pricing of their products with the launch of the RTX lineup to recoup some of the R&D that went into building the hardware support for ray tracing. It also works to now benefit the consumers by delivering more powerful hardware to the market at a lower overall cost. That said, AMD's next generation GPUs are on the horizon, so it'd probably be a smart move to wait for them to launch before making any purchasing decisions. NVIDIA's Super GPUs will be available on the 9th. AMD's offering debuts on the 7th. The Battle Royale-inspired PvP slash PvE shooter Hunt Showdown is leaving early access on PC and Xbox One August 27th. The game has been available on PC since February of last year. 
Since then, it's gathered a dedicated following and made its way to the Xbox Early Access program. A PlayStation 4 version is currently scheduled in fall. That wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. Let us know which article you like the best or if there is a piece of news that you think we missed that is interesting and worth mentioning. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.